welcome to Be Your Own Best Coach with JJ, the podcast. I believe that the best coach you can ever have is that one person that is staring straight back at you every morning in the mirror, you. Join me in discovering some key strategies so that you can create an empowered life and inspire others to live theirs. Your journey to being your own best coach starts right now. Welcome to Be Your Own Best Coach with JJ. Today we're going to be talking about the topic, Is Worry Worrying You? Now, I thought this was a great topic to talk about, particularly at this time when it's now, I'm recording this in August 2020 from Australia in Geelong, which is part of Victoria, and we are going through the COVID-19 challenge right now. And news just came out from the government to say that we have more restrictions and so therefore we have all of these rules that we need to follow and people are panicking, there's lots of fear around. And so I thought it was a great time to talk about worry because don't we all do that or haven't we done that in the past? I love this quote by Corrie Ten Boom. Don't you love that name? Corrie Ten Boom. And the quote goes like this. Worry does not empty tomorrow of its sorrow. It empties today of its strength. I love that so, so much. I'm going to say that again. The quote says, Worry does not empty tomorrow of its sorrow. It empties today of its strength. Now, how often do we even try and logically think about our worry and say, well, it protects us from something. It's like, I I need to worry about this because therefore I will prevent something from happening. Is that really true? Are we living in the moment? Yes, we can reflect and learn from the past and plan for the future, but there's no use worrying about anything in the present. Now with COVID-19, there's lots of fears around that and, and some of these you'll relate to everyday life. But one of the sources of this fear and what can come into our head is what we are fed from the media. Now, we know that bad news sells, don't don't we? And if you if you were walking past a newspaper stand and it was all happy days, it's not going to sell a paper. But if you're walking past a newspaper stand and then it said this disaster is going to happen, then you're like you stop in your tracks and you want to read it. So bad news sells, and that's what the media sells us. You see it in magazines, you see it on Facebook, you see it on the news, the ads, it's everywhere. So we've got to be mindful of what we listen to that goes into our minds. Now with COVID, you would see in Victoria, in Australia, that they're talking about it's a state of disaster. That's what it's called, a state of disaster. Now I remember listening to the announcement of the new restrictions and I physically felt it in my the pit of my stomach as soon as they said it's a state of disaster like how does that feel for you I felt this heaviness and I felt a little bit sick in the stomach hearing those words and fortunately for me I I I shifted it as quickly as I could because even words and language can bring us fear. And then, of course, going through COVID right now, all we're hearing is all the negativity around COVID and the stats and statistics of people dying and people getting it. And so we're hearing all of this noise of negativity around it. And, of course, People are going to be fearful of that. And even 
when you want a break from that those of you that watch tv you might think i want to chill out and i'll watch a show that it's relaxing maybe a comedy show and you put the tv on and then you hear the ad break come and the ad at the moment goes ding 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 like a like an alarm bell like a warning bell to tell you about covid and again you can get that that feeling whatever that feeling is for you when you're hearing that and again it's that negativity coming through and then you go on social media and people have photos of empty shelves of meat empty shelves of groceries of fruit and veggies of no toilet paper and we wonder why people are rushing to the supermarkets in fear of missing out, a fear that there's not going to be any food or toilet paper left because it's all out there. It's on social media and people might laugh about it. They might even say, oh, isn't this funny? Oh, look at this. Look at, look at my local supermarket. Oh, I got the last thing of toilet paper. But it, it, it festers that fear. And even walking into a supermarket and, and seeing that, when we're not used to looking at a supermarket that has bare shelves, that can bring that fear. And the world's changing. As human beings, we love certainty and safety. And right now it's full of uncertainty. It's full of new rules. We're walking down the street and we now have to go, wow, I can't stand too close to this person. And some people are even walking away from, walking across the road from people because they're so fearful that they might catch COVID or catch something else. I don't know what it is. And then we have people wearing masks now. So we're walking down the street and it's so different. I know different cultures, you might go into China and might say, okay, well, I'm used to people wearing masks, but we're not used to that in Australia. So for us, it's a whole overnight, it's like it's shifted. So it's all uncertain, it's all, all new. And that can be fearful for so many people. And then there's conflict that is happening right now. And people are fearful of conflict. And you hear the different values and beliefs that people have. You know, we've got people that like follow the rules and they can be saying, you know, those people that are not following the rules are selfish people. That all they care about is themselves. And then you have, and they might be calling the other, you know, the other side, if you want to say, they might be saying they're conspiracy theorists. And then the, the, the people that are called conspiracy theorists might be saying, I'm a truth seeker. I'm a critical thinker. And they might be going back to the people and saying, stop, stop being a sheep, stop, follow, stop you know, following rules that don't make sense. So you've got this conflict. Now, this conflict happens on social media. It can happen in the workplace. It can happen in families. And, it, and people are getting fearful and people are then behaving in a certain way. And then they're worried about this. They're worried about how they're showing up. They're worried about how the world is going to be. They're worried about the relationships that they have. You might be worried about health at the moment. Now, I'm talking specifically about COVID right now. But put it into perspective where we are or we can be worriers. In COVID right now, we could be worried about our health, our health or the people that we love's health, our mental health, our physical health, the connection that we have or haven't got with the people that we love and care for. We might be worried about our work. You know, is my husband or my son or me or my sister going to have a job tomorrow? What's going to happen to my business? What's going to happen with our money? So there's all this stuff around, particularly with COVID, but this is everyday life too. There are things that happen with our health, with our mental health, with our connections, with our work, with our business, with our money that we can worry about. But the thing is, it depends on how we're seeing this event. What filter are you seeing this challenge through? Whether it be COVID, whether it be something else. And I love this. I, I saw this in a book. 
I read this in, in, in a book and it was about two men that looked out from the prison bars and one saw mud and the other saw stars. Now, who was right? Well, you see, they both were. They're both right. The guy that looked out the same set of bars and the same direction saw the mud. And the other guy that looked out another set of bars at the same direction saw the stars beautifully shining and twinkling in the sky. They are both right. One saw mud and then the other saw stars. So what filter would serve you more, the mud or the stars? Because there's always going to be challenges in our life and they can either cause us worry or that we can learn something from it, we can be proactive. And I want to talk to you about some strategies that may serve you. Now, some may serve you, others may, others may not. You've got to look at what serves you. And you may have your own set of strategies that work for you that can help you stop that worry and be able to look forward and, and be able to live in the present moment and love where you are right now with gratitude. Now, one of the strategies I think is important that works for me is particularly when there's a lot of uncertainty in the world is I know I've got to bring certainty in my world because if there's too much uncertainty, I don't feel safe and humans don't feel safe when there's too much uncertainty, which is what we're going through at the moment with COVID and a lot of the world is going through that at the moment. So the first thing I look at is bringing certainty in my life. So what plan of action can I have? I look at where I am now and where is it I want to be and what can I do to be able to go to where I want to be. So I bring certainty, I bring routine into my life, however that might be. So it might be from a health perspective, going for a walk every day, reading every day, whatever it is, bringing that routine in my life. And understanding that there's a time to fight and a time to surrender. So there's times, yes, we've got to go for stuff. Leah, let's let's uh, let's do this thing. And then there's other times to say, let just let things take its course. Now, right now in Victoria, we're on a six six week. We've got these rules for six weeks so far, and I know Melbourne have really strict rules where they can't go out after eight o'clock. And so there's a curfew and we're wearing masks now. So there's all of these rules. And some of those rules, well, those rules that the government say, they're out of our control. We can think what we want about them, but they're out of our control. And so we've got to decide as human beings where what we surrender to and say, okay, it is what it is. And then there's other stuff that we say, no, there's a time to fight. So in regards to, say, if it was in your finances and you're like, I, I need to fight, I need to look at this and go, right, I'm going to, when I say fight, it's about I'm going to take action here rather than surrender. So you've got to find out when is the time to fight, take action, and when is the time to surrender. So to be proactive and take action in your life. And another one great thing that I know that I can do as well is keeping busy. When you're keeping busy and you're creating busyness in your life that's helpful for you, that's serving your purpose, then that gives you less time to worry. (laughs) And it also can tire you out. So when you're going to bed, it's like, I'm just exhausted now. I just want to sleep. So keeping busy is a great strategy to stop the worry and the other great strategy is thinking of others how can i serve others help others because when you do that you're focusing on other people and you're not focusing on yourself and so that can help you as well the important thing is also to see the challenge as it is not to see the challenge as better than it is or not to see the challenge as worse than it is 
Often when we're worrying, we're seeing things worse than what they are. We're blowing up the problems. So look at the challenge as it is. And a great other technique is that can work for you is to write it down. Write down what is that challenge. And so you might have have on one whole, you might have a, a A4 paper and draw a line in between and have all of the challenges that you have right now. And then what action you can take. But the other great strategy is, and this might sound, oh, you might think, oh, this wouldn't work. But let me tell you, it does. By looking at the worst case scenario, what could, and just looking at it for a moment, not sitting there and dwelling on the worst case scenario as if it's real. We're just looking at it. So we're looking at it and saying, what could the worst case scenario be? So we've got our paper and we're saying, okay, this is the challenge that we have. What could the worst case scenario be? And can I deal with that? So if the worst case scenario was that you lost your job, if that was the worst case scenario, then could you deal with that? And what would be your action if that happened? And so you have some preparation. Again, you're bringing some form of certainty into your life because you're preparing for that. Now, what could happen, you might have different scenarios. So it could be with your work. So you could say, one thing that could happen is that my hours could go down. Okay, so if your hours go down, that's that's one of the scenarios, then what would you do? And then there could be different scenarios right up until the worst case scenario. Now, the thing is, if you are ready for the worst case scenario and you accept the worst case scenario, then if that happens, You've already lived it and it's happened and and you know that you can deal with it because you've got some form of acceptance and action plan around that. The other thing that is important, particularly with, with worry, is to make sure that your body and your mind is you're exercising, you've got the right food, that you're going out in nature it's so important to go out in nature and whether it go out for a walk, sit out there and get some vitamin D, particularly now with COVID-19, getting some vitamin D into you. What vitamins, if you take vitamins, what food are you eating? How are you feeling your mind? Your mind is so powerful. What you think, you create. So what we're putting in our mind is so important. And this can also go with habits that we have in regards to what we watch on TV, what we fill our mind with, what we read, what we don't read, who we hang around with, all of those things. Because if we're filling our mind with junk, then we're going to worry about stuff, particularly knowing that the media feed us bad news because bad news sells. So the more bad news we get, some of it's going to stick and then that that can turn into worry. We don't need to have all of that bad news and junk in our head. Get the information you need to get in a form. So you might have, you can even have someone that you know, instead of going on Facebook and watching news every day, you might have turns. Okay, all I need to know is the guidelines. What's new? Give me the, the five five new things that I need to know or the top things that I need to know in regards to COVID right now. And that's all I need to know. I don't need to know anything else. I don't need to know it 10 times. I don't need to know it 20 times when the ad comes on. And I, I all I need to know is that information and I've got it great. And then I move on and do other things. So be really mindful what goes into your head, get into nature, think about what food that you're having. And that goes with alcohol and you know, all of those sorts of things. I know that alcohol sales are through the roof right now. So people often numb themselves rather and, and rather than thinking I've got to deal with my emotions, they're numbing themselves through alcohol or, or any other drug or, or doing some type of habit that's, that's trying to numb them. 
So it's really important that whatever you're putting in your in your mind and the habits that you have are serving you, serving your body and serving your mind. For me, I love to go for a walk. For me, every time I go for a walk, I listen to a podcast or I'll listen to music. Music's a great one too. Listen, put on your, your best piece of music, dance around the house. Music is a great mood shifter. And humour. Humour is great. So if you've got a funny friend, if you want to watch a comedy, get some humour into your life. And the important thing right now is to connect. One of our need, core needs as humans is connection. And with COVID right now, connection is, is limited So we've got to find different ways to connect. So whether it be on the phone, on a Zoom call, whether it's looking at each other through a glass, however it's going to be for you, look at different ways to connect with other people. And look at different hobbies that you can do. I love to cook. I love to cook. So right now I'm doing a lot of creative stuff around my business But I also love to cook. So I'm baking bread every day. Surprise, surprise. I know a lot of people are baking bread at the moment with COVID. But I'm baking bread and making different dishes. So I'm being creative. And I know some people are doing pottery or or doing that art class, whatever it might be that you can do. And you can do things like that online and get online and do some online courses. Self-learning is so important right now. Because whatever you're feeding your mind has to shift you into a space that's going to empower you. So you might be doing online piano classes or I know my clients are doing my public speaking classes at the moment. Whatever is online, self-learning can also be reading books. I read my book every single day. It's part of my routine. And so reading books, listening to podcasts, watching people in your space that you want to master your craft with. And the other important thing that is is a great strategy that particularly people are go, 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 is that we need to make sure that we rest. And when we're resting, now, some people that are go, go, go as high achievers might be going, I haven't got to any time for rest. Like, this is a crisis of COVID. I need to get my business pumping. I need to hustle, hustle, hustle. I get it. I get it. I get it. But at the same time, when we're resting, maybe you use the language of repair. <laughs> if you use the language, I am stopping and repairing right now, It's you're repairing, getting your body ready and surging it up with energy, repairing it, ready to fight another moment, to fight another day. And so it's important that we get great rest, great sleep, great rest. Maybe it's sitting outside in the sunshine, whatever it is, that is something that I put into my day daily and whether it be just stop and just close your eyes some people do meditation whatever it is for you but resting is really important because that's when our body repairs itself the other strategy that i think is important well it's important for me is faith and spirituality it's now whatever that means for you and and that allows you to let go and trust trust sometimes We can be, as humans, control freaks, particularly when the outside of us, the worlds of our events of our world, is so uncertain. We suddenly try and grab hold of control wherever we can. But there's times when we can just let it go and say, I trust it's going to work out. Now, I don't want you to think the wrong thing here. I'm not saying don't take action, don't. I'm not saying... Don't have an action plan. I'm not saying any of that. There's, Of course, we need to take action. We need to have a plan. I'm all for that. But there's also times when we have to let it go and trust that it's going to work out for us. And that's where your faith, your spirituality will come in. And 
gratitude. I know that I speak about this a lot, but it is so important. And I'm going to say it again, just in case people have not listened to my other podcast talking about gratitude, but gratitude is so, so important. Count your blessings, not your troubles. We are so blessed people. We have so much in our life already. And I remember Wayne Dyer said in one of his books, and I I read it and I read it a few times and it stuck with me. And he said before he goes to sleep every night, he said that he would thank God for his day and for being alive and for everything that he's got in his world. And then in the morning, before he puts his put his feet on the floor, he would thank God to say, thank you so much for being alive, being for all the things that I have, a comfy bed, the breath that I breathe. And, and so giving gratitude every single day. Now, how beautiful is that? If we can be grateful, and I do that every day, every single night before I go to sleep and every day before I put my feet on the floor, I look at what I'm grateful for and there is so much to be grateful for and it doesn't have to be the big things. I'm always grateful for the for my life. Every morning I wake up and I think I'm so grateful for to be alive today. I'm so grateful for that my family are healthy. I'm so grateful for the food that I have in the cupboard, the bed that I sleep in, the house that I live in. You know, there's so much to be grateful for. And when we're looking at the stuff that we have rather than what we don't have, our worries slip away because we're we're looking at the things and being grateful for what we already have, not looking at the stuff that we haven't got. And so gratitude is a big one. You can write it down, you can say it, every night before you go to sleep and every day when you wake up, whatever works for you, but always stopping and any time that you think, oh, why me? What's this happened to me? It's not fair. Stop and think, what what can I be grateful for in this moment? In this one moment, what can I be grateful for? Would it be the learning? Now, I know some of you are really, really challenged right now And you might be saying, yeah, but JJ, you don't know my circumstance. You don't know. It's not fair. Someone could be sick. Someone could be out of job. Maybe finance is really hard. Maybe you're losing your house. I don't know what your circumstance is. But whatever circumstance it is, there is always, always, always something to be grateful for. Always. Search for it. And even when your brain says there's nothing to be grateful for, say, yes, there is. Look for it. What is it? It could be the person that you walked past that smiled at you in the street. It could be the nurse that was helping someone that was sick. It could be the food that you ate that you were grateful for because you can still eat food. Not everyone has food that they can put on the table. There's always something to be grateful for. The other strategy I think is really important right now is to have a team, a tribe of people that are supporting you, even one person, a support buddy. Now, those of you that that may feel isolated right now, there are always people around you. You are never alone. And some of you might be saying, yes, I am alone. You are never alone. Because you, you, if you're listening to me right now, you've got the means and sources to be able to talk to somebody. So whether it be someone that you, your neighbor, it could be someone online, get into Facebook groups, for instance, that are positive and empowering. If you want to do that, see the friends around you, make sure you look at the people around you. Are they serving you or are they not serving you? You don't want people that are negative about everything. You don't need that. Have people that, yes, can challenge you, but also can empower you, support you. And remember, there's there's places like Lifeline. uh, Their number's 131114. So 131114. 
14 lifeline anyone that feels that you haven't got someone to talk to please make sure you've got lifeline there if you're feeling if you're really worried and things that you're feeling really down speak to lifeline so there is always someone that you can speak to you are not alone you are never alone there are people that care for you and maybe they don't even know you yet maybe they're not a great friend of yours maybe they're a stranger in the street but let me tell you there is someone that cares about you and so make sure that you reach out reaching out when you're troubled and getting some support is so important so remembering the strategies so get a plan a vision know when a time to fight and a time to surrender be proactive keep busy because when you're busy you get tired you haven't got time to worry see the challenge as it is no better or worse than it is write down your challenge that you have look at the worst case scenario and then prepare for that and then you're prepared and then if it happens you know hey i can deal with this and and whether it be like i've got no money i've got everything's gone okay well let's just we can press the restart button at any moment i i can't remember who it was there was one person who's a millionaire some of you listening to the call will know who it is who said if i lost all of my money today if i lost every cent and i was broke i would just create it again and so i think about that whatever happens in your life you can always it's it's a moment and you can change it you can start again money is only money a house is only a house but there's only one of you so make sure that you look after you and make sure that you exercise go out in nature eat the right food connect with people however you can right now humor have music your hobbies your self-learning make sure that you're resting because remember that means you're repairing yourself repairing yourself so that you can then get have another day of whatever you want to create your faith your spirituality let go and trust sometimes be grateful count your blessings not your troubles and have a support buddy and remember you are not alone and those of you that are going through challenges right now this too shall pass think about any challenges that you've had in your life and if you think about a a big challenge that you've had five years ago or one year ago or six months ago and I'm sure you feel very differently about that right now because it's happened you've dealt with it you've learned from it remembering to your past is not your future it does not dictate your future so even if whatever way you behaved if things didn't turn out in the past doesn't mean that history repeats itself because your past does not dictate your future remembering to have a support buddy and those of you that are really challenged right now there's always lifeline which you can call 13 11 14 if you really need some support i trust that this has been valuable for you and i want to finish off with saying that every day every hour every minute every second is a new moment in time that moment can bring new opportunities and possibilities seek out those moments and trust that they are always available to you Thanks for tuning in to Be Your Own Best Coach with JJ. Make sure you subscribe to this podcast and follow me on Instagram at JJ Speaker Coach. And remember to live with insatiable passion, create an empowered life and inspire others to live theirs.